Hey, what's going on everyone? This is iReviews back with another video and today we're talking about the latest iOS update, iOS 16.2. Now, iOS 16.2 has turned out to be an amazing update with a ton of new features and changes. And there are even more new features and changes that we have to talk about. This update is truly amazing and it just doesn't stop bringing new features and changes to iOS 16. So let's go ahead, take a look again at iOS 16.2 and we have some new features to talk about and some other stuff, which is really interesting. All right, first of all, we're talking about the weather app. Now, this will be a feature that will be location based. You won't get this everywhere in the world, but currently I believe it's available in the USA and Canada. Now you get news articles on the weather app. So you can see right here, taking a look at New York, it will show you news articles, of course, related to that place and the weather conditions. This is really, really cool. Of course, tapping there, it will take you to the news article on the news app. Now we have talked about a feature that Apple has added to iOS 16.2 to Siri actually, which you can find simply by going to Siri and search and then Siri responses. It is called preferred silent responses. Now you will be able to actually find this as well. If you go under accessibility and then go here to Siri, you will also have here the option to switch to silent responses. If you want to get most of the responses from Siri on the silent mode, of course, only when you're actually wearing headphones or you're driving a car, it will give you a spoken response. There are a few changes on the TV app as well. Now you will be able to actually follow sports with live activities from the TV app, which is of course a really great feature. And of course we have also the new option for more frequent updates. Of course, this is very useful for sports activities. If you're watching a game, you want the score to be updated on real time. You head on to TV right here, live activities, and make sure you have more frequent updates enabled. Of course, this will consume more battery, but you will get the score in real time. Another change here for the TV app, when you go to the home screen of the TV app, you will see here the upcoming and the recent shows and, t and also movies, and now they have a very big preview. As you can see right here, we have a really large preview here for the TV shows and movies, of course, which are recent and upcoming. And when you open the TV app on iOS 16.2, you will also get this new splash screen. So it talks about the new Apple TV previews, more from TV Plus, and a one sports experience. Follow your teams on Apple TV app. They automatically appear on Apple News. So basically a few th things that are new with the TV app, you will be able to see them now on a new splash screen. And with iOS 16.2, if you live in India, now you can use 5G on your iPhone. If you have, of course, an iPhone and a carrier that support 5G, head on to your settings, go to seller, voice and data, and now you can select 5G. Moving on to the new freeform app that Apple has added to iOS with iOS 16.2. And it has a really interesting feature. If you add a photo, you will actually be able to crop that photo. You can see you can zoom in and out of the photo with this slider. And then you can, of course, crop it any way you like. So this is really, really interesting. I'm really loving this feature. It makes it very easy for you to actually crop any photo any way you like. Super easy and super simple to do. And when you have an image on the Freeform app and you want to see that image, how it looks. So basically you've done maybe like the resizing or cropping or something like that. You can just tap that little eye right there. Of course, you have to first select the photo. If you tap the eye right there, it will show you the photo on the full screen. And of course, you can take a look at it. And from here, you can also save it if you want to on your photo library or share it. iOS 16.2 will bring changes to maps as well. And specifically for Switzerland, Netherlands, Belgium and Luxembourg. You will have now more landmarks and more 3D models that will be available for these countries with iOS 16.2. Also with iOS 16.2, Apple is expanding the emergency SOS feature, which is turning out to actually be a great feature. It has just saved a few lives recently. So that's a great, great ad addition by Apple to iOS and of course the newer iPhones. It's a great feature and now is expanding to France, the UK, Ireland and Germany as well. And all that of course with iOS 16.2.
Now this right here is really interesting, a change for private relay users. So if you use, of course, iCloud Plus and use the private relay feature, when you want to turn it off, now it won't actually just allow you to turn it off immediately. It will ask you if you want to turn it off until tomorrow, just like you get the pop-up when you do that thing, when you try to turn off the, the optimized battery charging feature, it will give you the exact same option for a private relay as well. So these are some of the new features and changes that you will be able to find on iOS 16.2. And it, uh, it has overall been a great update, a lot of new features, and of course quite stable and a pretty good battery life. But what's next? I'm really not expecting Apple to release any new updates this year. We had iOS 16.3 Beta 1 released last week. But this week, we will have, of course, by the end, by the weekend, we have Christmas, and then we're moving into the new year, so I don't actually expect Apple to release any new software this year. I would expect them to release maybe an iOS 16.2.1 early next year before, of course, they move to iOS 16.3, which should be released somewhere around mid-February 2023. Now that we're done with iOS 16.2 and 16.3, let's move on to iOS 17. Yes, I know it's really, really early. iOS 17 will come to the public in September 2023, but we have some really important information. Now there's a report from Mark Bloomberg, according to him, which is of course a very trusted source when it comes to Apple related stuff. Apple will be forced to allow alternative app stores and side loading of apps due to the new EU restrictions. So the European Union will actually force Apple to do that, allow side loading of apps on the iPhone. Basically, we will have alternative app stores. This will happen in Europe. I don't know if Apple will, of course, move on and just allow this on other countries as well. But due to the European Union laws, they have to actually do this until March 2024. So there will be a deadline. March 2024 will be the last date when Apple has to have actually this done and completed and allow a side loading of apps with iOS 17. Of course, by March 2024, probably iOS 17 should be around 17.2 or maybe 17.3. And we can expect Apple to actually do that even earlier, probably with the release of iOS 17 in September, we should have the ability to sideload apps and have alternative app stores on the iPhone and iPad as well. <coughs> So that's basically it for this video, guys. Something really unbelievable. We never thought that we would see Apple allowing sideloading of apps and alternative app stores for the iPhone, but it is happening. The laws of the EU will force Apple to do that, just like they will force them to actually move on to USB-C. So that will happen as well. And of course, it's always better to have competition and have the freedom of choice. So that's basically it for this video, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Go ahead and leave a like if you did. Don't forget to subscribe for more. I'll see you on the next one.